All right, it looks like we're recording now. Hello and welcome everybody. This is our Urbana Park District 2021 Summer Camp Open House. And we hope that this will be an opportunity for you to ask any questions that you might have about the upcoming camp season. Um, you know, we're here just to just to say hello, introduce ourselves and offer up some information for you. My name is Savannah Donovan. I am uh, changing roles at the Park District and I'm moving into the role of Environmental Program Manager at the Anita Purvis Nature Center. But I have run uh, Nature Day Camp as the coordinator for, uh, this will be my eighth summer. Um, so I've got a good familiarity with Nature Day Camp and all of the park district camps and uh, I'll sort of be leading us through the summer camp handbook today. Um, I'd like to call out some of our other staff just to make some quick introductions. Uh, David. Hi everyone, my name is David Subers and I am um, in Savannah's previous role as the Environmental Public Programs Coordinator here at Anita Purvis Nature Center. So I'll be uh, kind of administering and helping to oversee the Nature Day Camp this summer. Thanks, David. Um, Joe and Greg? I'm Greg Kales. I'm a sports uh, athletics coordinator. And I'm stationed over here at Brookings Gym. And my name is Joe Manning. I am the newly hired sports camp supervisor for the summer as well. Thank you, uh, Matt. All right. Hey, what's up? So my name is uh, Matthew. Um, I'm the brand new community program coordinator. Uh, this will be my first year overseeing the arts camp over at the Phillips Recreation Center, but I've worked alongside the previous uh, community program coordinator on all of her different camps and everything. So kind of got a pretty good knowledge on kind of how she does things and gives me a good idea on how to run things this summer, so. And Matthew, my kiddos signed up to go to camp with you this summer. So. Yeah, I, I saw. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, Chelsea, would you like to introduce yourself? My name is Chelsea Prawl. I go by she, her pronouns, and I am uh, the Environmental Education Coordinator here at the Anita Purvis Nature Center. And I've been with Nature Day Camp for quite a few years, uh, but this summer my role is primarily in um, staffing the teen, our junior counselors or our teen staff uh, that will be working with camp this year. Thanks, Chelsea. And Rain, if you're there, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Rain. Um, I will be the Nature Day Camp site supervisor this year. I've worked with our camps for the past 10 plus years growing up for the program. So I'm really excited. All right, thank you Park District staff for taking a minute to introduce yourselves. Um, so here we are looking at our 2021 summer camp handbook. Um, it's been a long process for us to get this, you know, even published digitally for you all because um, we're trying to be, you know, really responsive to changes in COVID protocols and um, I will tell you that uh, at this point, this is going to provide a snapshot of, of what our plans are for this summer. Um, if COVID restrictions loosen up, you know, substantially in, in phase five, then there may be some uh, loosening of some protocols or restrictions at our summer camps. But the best that I can tell you right now is that this is a reflection of what we're doing as we start camp this year. Um, if you have specific questions about how things might change, you know, feel free to ask those today. That's why we're here. All right, so at the beginning of this, skipped over my table of contents here. So uh, we're gonna give you the link to where you can find this handbook online. You can go through all of this information on your own. Um, it starts with a table of contents. So hopefully you can navigate, you know, the general information at the top of the handbook and then, you know, get into more specific information about the different, uh, we have three different areas of camp that we're running this summer. So here again are our contacts and, uh, each of these uh, people are on our call here today. We do hire um, part-time leaders and camp supervisors to uh, work our summer camp programs. 
Um, they are all required to be certified in CPR and first aid. And as Chelsea mentioned, we also have junior counselors. Is there anything else you'd like to say about the junior counselor program, Chelsea? Contact Chelsea if you have questions. There you go. <laughs> All right, so this is probably why a lot of us are here today. What are the COVID-19 protocols going to be for summer camp? Um, you know, this is gonna be stuff you've all heard elsewhere. <laughs> When we're doing it here too. Um, obviously, we are requiring masks, particularly indoors. The only times that campers or staff would be able to remove their mask indoors is when they're seated to eat and they're also an appropriate distance apart. So right now we're starting with a six foot social distancing. It's possible that that may be reduced um, in the future. Masks will be worn outdoors when campers and staff need to be close to one another, but if they can maintain social distance outdoors um, and you know, doing activities that, that you know, they can be separate with their masks off, then that will be permitted. Um, we're going to have frequent hand washing and use of hand sanitizer, uh, particularly before and after meal times. Kiddos will be washing their hands before and after meals. Um, hand sanitizer will be used frequently, you know, whenever they're arriving or departing from a location or using different supplies. And you've probably all seen this list of symptoms. We want uh, staff and campers to stay home if they have experienced any of these symptoms on the list. So I'm not going to run through them here with you now. You all know the COVID symptoms, but here they are. Um, I will note that it also says stay home if in the last 24 hours you have had close contact with someone else displaying symptoms of COVID-19 or if they have a confirmed case of COVID-19. So what is close contact? Close contact means that within two days before the person's symptom onset, so you're, let's say your camper was exposed to another person. If that other person had um, no symptoms when your camper was with them, but two days later they became symptomatic, that is defined as close contact with somebody with COVID symptoms. Um, it includes anybody in your house or any direct physical contact or contact with infectious secretions. So like, you know, somebody sneezed on something or coughed on something. Um, if they're sharing eating or drinking utensils or being within six feet of somebody for a total of 15 minutes within a 24 hour period, unless they're wearing an N95 mask. Does anybody have questions at this time about close contact or any of the information that I've covered so far? Feel free to unmute yourself or ask your questions in the chat. All right, so we are following all COVID-19 cleaning standards according to the Illinois Department of Public Health. So restrooms and all high touch points will be cleaned. Um, at this point, we're still planning on cleaning them every hour, although that may be a restriction that can be uh, lessened. Again, we're the, the Urbana Park District overall will at minimum follow all recommendations from the CU Public Health District, from the Illinois Department of Public Health and from the Center for Disease Control. And often we are going to be even more conservative than what you know, the standards allow because we are just trying to be extra safe for all of our campers and staff this summer. Um, facilities will be deep cleaned at least twice a day. Um, everyone entering the camp facilities will be required to answer health screening questions. So this list that we just went over, um, you know, when you drop your camper off at camp, we're not gonna ask you every single question on this list. We expect that you should be familiar with the items on the list and we're gonna ask you, you know, are you feeling well today? How do you feel today? Are you feeling good today? <laughs> if you're feeling good today, uh, you can come to camp. We just uh, removed the, um, taking temperatures from our protocols. So at this point, we're not gonna be taking temperatures of every 
uh, kiddo and staff person at camp, but we do expect you to stay home if you have had a fever of 104 degrees or higher. Um, and if a camper were to develop, you know, a high temperature at camp, they would be sent home or any of the other symptoms. <laughs> and that the same goes for staff. You know, if somebody arrives to camp without symptoms, but they become symptomatic, they will need to go home. Um, anybody who's out, visitors outside of our registered campers and assigned staff. So aside from the people who we know are gonna be here every day, if there are other visitors coming into contact, they're always gonna have to fill out contact tracing information. Some other things, uh, ways that we've changed our camp this summer. Uh, right now, we're just taking half capacity of our, of our typical uh, group size. So our regular capacity for camp is 12 campers to one adult. And we're starting this summer with a ratio of six campers to one adult. Um, my half day preschool nature camp has been canceled. Our specialty camps are not happening this summer either. So we're, we're going pretty basic this year. We also do not have aquatics camp this year, uh, just nature camp, arts camp, and sports camp. All of those camps are going to take place in two week long sessions. So if you've come to a park district camp before, you'll know that they were in one week long sessions typically. Um, and we're moving that to two week long sessions just to minimize cross contact between participants. We know that a lot of campers travel from one camp to the next. And so instead of, you know, allowing campers to attend different camps weekly, we're kind of restricting that again, just to minimize uh, contact with others. Some of our typical summer camp activities are being suspended to limit contact with the general public. So this includes riding MTD buses for transit, uh, taking field trips and doing uh, swim days at the public pools. We've got some frequently asked questions here. So what happens if someone, a camper or a staff person, displays symptoms of COVID-19 at camp? They will get sent home immediately and they can return to camp after they have been isolated for 10 days from symptom onset or if they've had 72 hours of not exhibiting any symptoms. So maybe, you know, that symptom, um, maybe that nausea or something, maybe it wasn't COVID uh, and you haven't had any symptoms for 72 hours, you know, maybe it was just something you ate, <laughs> then you can come back to camp. Or you can uh, show proof of two negative test results that have to be at least 24 hours apart. So we're not requiring any staff or campers to be tested for COVID-19, but it can facilitate a quicker return to camp. Next question, when can campers or staff return to camp after having close contact with someone else who has a positive case of COVID-19? If you've been contacted by the public health department, if you know that you were in close contact, and remember that starts two days before the other person's symptoms begin, um, you can return to camp after self-quarantining for 14 days. What happens if there is a positive case of COVID-19 at camp? Uh, well, the affected individuals will not be permitted to return to camp until they have done all of these things, isolated for at least 10 days since the symptom onset, and have been without a fever for at least 24 hours without using fever reducing medication, and have their other symptoms improving. An email would be sent out that a COVID-19 case had occurred at camp. If your camper had close contact with that individual, you will be contacted by the Champaign-Urbana Public Health District. If others have had close contact with the affected individual, the park district may suspend some or all of the camp for the safety of everyone. Savannah, we had a question come in the chat. Um, one sec. Uh, so the question was, um, does this mean that the half day pre-K camps are canceled? And I'll answer what I know and anyone else can chime in. Uh, Nature Day Camp and Sports Camp are not running the half day pre-K camps this year, but that my understanding is that that is still 
on at arts camp. So if you signed up, a full day. is that correct? Well, uh, pre-K arts camp is a full day camp, uh, but it's, it's, it's being offered. But I think nature day camp was the only one that had a half day. That's right. Yeah. In a, in a normal summer, we do a half day pre-K nature camp and a full day pre-K arts camp so that um, caregivers can choose, you know, what works best for them. Uh, at the nature center, you know, we're looking at having 30 kids total at our full day nature camp for ages six to 12. And, you know, if we were to have a rainy day, and we needed all 30 of those campers to be inside with all of our staff, we simply wouldn't have the space for the pre-K camps to be inside as well. So it's really about being able to keep everybody indoors safely with social distance. Um, that's, that's one of the main reasons we decided to cancel that camp for this summer. Pre-K nature camp should return next summer, which is the half day pre-K option. Good questions. Any other questions about any of this? All right, the, <laughs> the rest of it is easier to swallow. <laughs> it's kind of more typical stuff I'm gonna go through here. Um, if your camper is going to be absent from camp, uh, please do call and let us know. So here are the phone numbers that you can call for all of the different uh, facilities and locations. Um, in addition to the list of symptoms that we went over for COVID, which can also be, you know, similar symptoms to the common cold. Um, in addition to those, please keep your camper home if they have head lice until they've been uh, treated with their first treatment. So after their first treatment, they'll be allowed to return to camp. On the first day of each session that your camper attends, you are going to check in your camper at the camp's designated check-in site. So there's more specific information within each of those uh, different camp sections uh, below. Basically, we, we just need to do that final check to make sure that we have all of your emergency information, that we've got everything we need for your camper to be able to safely stay with us. So whether or not you're coming to every session of nature camp or you're moving from nature camp to sports camp, um, anytime it's the first day of a session, please come and check in. You typically at the front desk or with the reception staff. Um, at that time, you should receive a weekly schedule that will I, give you more information about who your camper's leader is and the activities that are going to be happening for that session. Signing in and signing out procedures are changing this year. So we are using a brand new app called ePACT. And I'll talk a little bit more about ePACT here in a moment, but um, it is both an online web portal, which is a secure database for storing emergency information. Um, and it also has apps that we can use on our uh, smart devices and computers. So these are gonna, this process is gonna take the place of both of um, our sign in and out sheets, the handwritten sheets that we used to use. And it's also taking place of the paper camper information forms. So if you've attended a park district camp before, you know you've had to fill out an information form that lists details such as your campers uh, food allergies or special needs, um, information about their medications, um, who's allowed to pick them up from camp, all of that really important information, who's their doctor, what's your preferred hospital, all of that's going to be stored in EPACT now. So when you arrive to drop off your camper at camp, you will always have to physically walk into the drop off space and use that tablet to sign in your camper. Um, sometimes exceptions can be made um, if like, for example, you want your camper to be able to ride their bike to camp on their own, um, in that case, please contact the camp's coordinator with that request and we will need a written note from you to be able to make that exception. Um, basically, we would then have our camp staff check in that camper. When you go to sign out your camper, so at pickup at the end of the day, um, you will be Again, you know, physically signing out your camper on that ePACT uh, app on a tablet. Uh, we'll always provide hand sanitizer and make sure that that's a sanitary 
uh, experience for you. Picture identification is required for anybody picking up your camper. So there's a couple options here. You can show a government issued photo ID. So that would be a driver's license, a state ID, a passport. <laughs> um, or you can upload photographs of all of those adults who are allowed to pick up your camper. You can upload those photos into their EPACT account so that when our staff are you know, doing checkout procedures, they'll see that person's face show up and they'll know that that's the appropriate person who your camper should be going home with. Um, we also have some ability to take pictures of people at pickup. So um, it's possible that we could add pictures later, but you know, anytime, let's say you're giving your neighbor or your friend down the street um, permission to pick up your camper in, in times of need, you know, ask that person to send you a headshot of themselves. Say, just take a, a quick selfie of yourself, send it to me and I'll upload it to my camper's EPACT account. Um, generally, the drop-off period in the morning will be from 7.30 to 8.30 a.m. You will not be permitted to sign in a camper before 7.30 a.m. So we are kind of strict about that. Our staff need to have time to prepare and be fully ready for campers. Um, so drop-off begins at 7.30. Occasionally, uh, people may need to drop off later than 8.30 a.m., but keep in mind that the day is starting, you know, around 8.30 to 9 a.m. is typically the time when campers are putting on their sunscreen for the day, they're getting their important morning announcements, they're learning what their schedule and their day is going to be like. So, you know, if you can get your camper here by 8.30 a.m., that's always advantageous for them to be able to have a good start to their day. All of our regular camps end at 3 p.m. We like that pickup period to not start before 2.45 p.m. Uh, you know, we like our, our pickup period and our drop-off period to be a time that we can count on so that we know that your campers will be where you expect them to be. Um, if you need to pick up earlier than 2.45, you are welcome to speak with your camps a coordinator or supervisor, maybe write a note if they have a, a doctor's appointment or something that they need to leave camp early for, uh, then we'll arrange a pickup location with you so that you know your camper will be where you need them to be when you need to come and pick them up. If you're not able to pick up your camper by 3 p.m., there are afternoon extended camp options and those go from 3 to 5.30 p.m., but you do have to pre-register um, and we're not allowing um, the extended camp drop-in option as we used to. So you do have to pre-register for all extended camp. We are not going to offer the service this summer where, um, you know, half an hour before the camp day ends, you call and say, hey, do you have space in extended camp for my kid today? Um, again, we're just trying to limit uh, mixing of different groups of kids together as much as we can. So please check out extended camp options if you need a later pickup. If you do not pick up your camper on time, there are late fees of $5 for every five minutes that you're late picking up your camper. Those fees for our regular camps, they begin at 3.10 p.m. And for extended camp, that begins at 5.35 p.m. So that's like your absolute, absolute latest must pick up your camper by this time. Um, and camp leaders will be able to, you know, they'll, they'll be writing uh, receipts that they'll send to their office staff uh, to enforce that payment for, for late pickup fees. Um, and this just reiterates, you know, try to give us your camper schedule in advance, make those arrangements in advance. Campers are really active at camp. And what we saw at spring break camp was those campers um, probably hadn't used their bodies and minds quite so much in such a long time that they were just starving. <laughs> they were so hungry. And we do see this every year at nature camp. Our kids are outside a lot during the day and they're really active and they get hungrier than usual. So maybe your camper doesn't eat a lot of lunch at home, <laughs> expect them to want to eat more at camp. So just something to keep in mind. 
Um, all of our camps are utilizing the Champaign-Urbana Public Health District's summer food program to be able to offer free snacks and meals as we're able to. So I believe that every one of our, our three camps, sports camp, nature camp, and arts camp are all offering uh, morning snack. Is that right, Matt? You're offering morning snack? Okay. Yeah. Um, technically, that morning snack is classified by the summer food program as a breakfast meal, so it always includes milk, and it's often um, cereal. Usually it's a, a milk, a grain, and a fruit uh, for that morning snack. And then um, Arts Camp is also in a position where they have enough uh, refrigerator storage to be able to offer lunches for all of their campers as well. More details about um, lunches and snack times are found within the individual sections of uh, the camp handbook here. So scroll down there to find out more information. Uh, we do have some information about how to pack a waste-free lunch. It's one of our uh, green initiatives at the park district is to you know, try to reduce waste whenever possible. I mentioned earlier that we are not planning regular visits to the public pools with our summer camps, but instead um, coordinators are planning many more water play days. So it could be a regular day within the week that um, a camp will designate as this, maybe it's Water Wednesday, you know, every Wednesday or something could be water play day, or it could also depend on the weather and the temperature. Sometimes when it gets hotter in July, um, those kids really like to do more water play days. So just look to your campers session schedule for more information about when you'll need to send them with some extra dry clothes. We really prefer that campers on those days come to camp with their clothes on that they can get wet in and you know either you can send them with a towel and and they can dry off they're probably not going to get drenched but i suppose they might um you know they can have swimwear on underneath a t-shirt and shorts if that works for you um dressing them in layers is helpful but basically what we want to avoid is all the campers needing to change into their swimwear so bring them in their swimwear so we don't have to do a massive changing of clothes here that gets hairy sometimes um, if there's hazardous or rainy weather we will relocate campers indoors if there is a situation where you know weather is very severe, we may contact you in advance for early pickup. You know, in my eight years, that hasn't been the circumstance. We've always been to, able to accommodate campers on rainy days, um, but you know, it's just in there as a contingency plan. So th their safety is always our first priority. If if they're out, let's say exploring Crystal Lake Park, and you know a storm's rolling in fast, we're going to get them to the nearest storm shelter. And we'll always keep um, keep you all notified. One other wonderful thing about the EPACT system is that it really helps to facilitate communication as well. So camp coordinators and supervisors are going to be able to reach you with emails, text messages, and even voicemails directly uh, whenever we have a change of plans or an important emergency notification. Some items that are not allowed at camp kind of uh, self-explanatory here. Don't, don't send your campers with valuable items, please. We don't want them to be broken, lost, or stolen. Um, cell phones are permitted, but we would like them to be kept on silent during camp. Um, some exceptions may be given for campers with specific sensory needs. So just talk to your camp's uh, coordinator for more information. Remember to label all of your campers' belongings with their name. Um, if you don't want to use a Sharpie to actually write on your camper's stuff, you know, sometimes you can use a piece of masking tape or even scotch tape and write their name on that and stick it on their clothing. It's really helpful for keeping down the lost and found items. But we will keep lost and found items at each camp location so that if your camper leaves something, they should be able to come back and pick it up later. As we stated earlier, all of our leaders and supervisors are going to be certified in first aid and CPR. Um, it's important that your campers e-packed account is updated with the most up-to-date 
emergency contact information so that we know who to contact, where to send your camper if they if they need to, you know, be taken in an ambulance. Um, these circumstances are extremely rare, but it's important that we have a plan for that in place. Asthma and food allergies. Again, please specify that in your camper's EPAC account. Uh, many campers need to bring EpiPens to camp and we will work with you on that. Um, if your camper needs to bring an EpiPen or some other medication, we will also ask that you fill out a medication administration packet. So there are links to that. You can contact the staff at the Phillips Recreation Center or look on our website uh, for the digital fillable medical administration packet. Uh, if you arrive to camp and you don't have that filled out yet, but you're, you're, you've got medication to hand over, uh, we'll have you fill it out at that time. Whenever possible, see if your, um, if your camper's uh, physician can prescribe that medication to be taken outside of camp hours. We do uh, everything we can to provide equal access. We follow the Americans with Disabilities or ADA Act. Um, and inclusion of campers with different needs is extremely important to us. Um, we will make every attempt to include campers you know, like I said, of all different um, abilities. But this year, we do need to make sure that every camper participating is able and willing to wear a mask, socially distance, and wash their hands. So kids with special needs are going to be required to follow the same expectations that we have of all of our staff and campers. We are lucky to have the Champaign-Urbana Special Recreation um, that works with both the Champaign Park District and the Urbana Park District to help us accommodate campers with special needs and you know, provide equal and inclusive opportunities for them. Um, but they're, we're kind of all operating under this mode for this summer. So campers will all have to be able to you know, follow COVID requirements. Please let us know if you think you have a camper who needs an inclusion aid or some kind of assistance. Uh, we're really happy to help you um, field that process to be able to try to request an inclusion aid. Um, if a camper needs an inclusion aid, but we're not able to, the, the, but CUSR is not able to provide one, um, they may not be able to come to camp this year. So there is more information and a phone number for the CUSR inclusion coordinator here. Savannah, we had another quick question to come in the chat, if that's okay. Yes, please. Uh, it's a good one. Uh, so for the camps that don't have lunch and PM snack provided, are there restrictions on what types of food kids can bring? Thinking about peanut butter, et cetera. So that would apply for all camps where uh, people are bringing lunches. Mm -hmm. Matt, did you want to say anything? I know arts camp is a nut free, completely nut free. Oh, Matt, Matt you're, you're muted. There it goes. Okay, yeah, for, for our camp, it's, it's really no restrictions. Um, usually what we do is, and I think this is something that we gotta talk about, but normally when we have somebody that brings something for lunch or a snack or something like that. And we have somebody in the room who has an allergy or something like that, we, we kind of tend to move them away. Um, either usually to the kitchen is normally where we would have like our backup room at. Um, this might have to be something I talk this over with, but I mean- At, at Nature Day Camp in the past, um, we have usually eaten outside whenever we can. We'll probably continue with that as we're able to this summer, but we would kind of designate a, a nut-free table for kiddos who have severe nut allergies. Um, some of this I think is gonna be, you know, they're gonna be protected just by our COVID procedures because they will be spaced apart when they're eating and they'll be washing hands before and after. So that will help. Um, if your child has a severe nut allergy, just let us know, communicate with us about the severity. You know, we have had plenty of kids with very severe nut allergies and we will do everything we can to keep nuts away from your camper. 
right? Yeah. I take it very seriously. Definitely. And that, uh, just to want to add one thing, that would be a really important example of something to have on your camper information form in your EPAC account. Um, and anytime there's a serious allergy like that, it keeps a flag on your camper that we can see. So we're it, it keeps us aware of it. Oh yes, this camper has an allergy and we see that um, pretty frequently. Mm -hmm. I will say that if your camper's nut allergy extends beyond peanuts, um, nature campers are outside a lot and we have uh, native walnut trees. We have native hickory trees and they may be around those. So I know this was a question from a, a parent in the past and we ended up transferring that kiddo to arts camp because uh, you know the, the, their parents just weren't certain how severe their allergy would be to those native nut trees. So we're always gonna err on the side of safety here. So you will all receive very soon, um, hopefully within the next week or two, an invitation to set up your EPACT account. So look for that, again, not yet, but you will receive that soon. Um, it should be a very simple invitation. It should have a button to click to link you to the portal where you're going to create your EPACT account. If you ever have trouble with EPAC setting that up, please feel free to call us at the Phillips Recreation Center. Uh, that's the, the hub of our registration um, and information for, for our recreation department and hopefully they can help you with any EPAC issues you have. Um, if you need access to an internet connected device in order to set up your campers EPAC account, uh, we do have some uh, tablets and things that can be used, you know, at the Phillips Rec Center or even here in the lobby of the Anita Purvis Nature Center. So just reach out to us. Um, if you haven't yet registered for camp, um, this is helpful to know. You can do a payment schedule where you don't have to pay the entire camp fee up front. Um, so this is more details about that. The $25 deposit per camper per week is due at the time of registration, but then the remaining balance can be paid by automatic withdrawal. Um, and so this is the uh, schedule here. So for session one, which begins on June 7th, that automatic withdrawal will take place on May 24th. If it bounced or the transaction didn't go through for some reason, um, we would need payment by Thursday, May 27th in order for your camper to remain in camp. Our rules and behavior guidelines haven't changed. So our general expectations for campers are that they use walking feet indoors, that they're kind to themselves and others, that they use gentle and helping hands, uh, that they do their best, use kind words, use listening ears, keep your space clean, follow directions and ask a leader if you need help and using inside voices when you're inside. So pretty basic expectations, not that far off from school. Um, this goes through what are the consequences of poor behavior and I'll tell you that you know, we don't escalate things very quickly here. You're, you're gonna have some form of communication with your camper's leader, supervisor, or coordinator if there's any kind of behavior problems or, or things that we wanna talk with you about, about how we can, you know, serve your camper better. How, how can we alleviate certain, you know, trigger situations or things like that. Um, we do use timeouts, usually after a warning. So, um, you know, What's not included here is that we do train all of our staff to redirect campers when we see negative behavior to give them positive alternatives, you know, for, for redirecting their behavior uh, before we even tend to give out a warning. They will get a warning before they get a timeout. Um, so we, we build up to timeouts, but, you know, if there was some kind of persistent um, inappropriate behavior, these are the consequences that we would carry out. It's very rare. Um, and then our no firearms policy is in here. All of our camps are um, 
monitored through DCFS. We have to meet all of their standards. And uh, that's one of the things that's the, the no firearms policy is in here just because uh, DCFS calls for that. But um, for me as a parent, it's nice to know that, you know, we're following all of the DCFS requirements and guidelines. All right, now I've kind of done my uh, portion of talking at the front end here. I'm going to leave it to the camp coordinators and supervisors to talk a little bit more about their individual camps. Um, I would say, uh, coordinators, let's try to shoot for just five minutes or so and just hitting on those things that, you know, are, are unique to your camp. And again, please, everybody feel free to ask questions in the chat as we go. David, would you like to start? Yes, thank you, Savannah. Um, so I'm not going to take too much time here. So we do have time to reach all the camps. But once again, if you uh, joined a little late, my name is David Subers, and I will be the coordinator for the Nature Day Camp this year. So anytime Savannah refers to your coordinator, that is me for the Nature Day Camp. So um, our camp is held at the Anita Purvez Nature Center. If you're not familiar, the address is there, and it's right near the um, pool with the water slide, the aquatic center. So you may be familiar with where that is. Um, for Nature Day Camp, um, we're going to start scheduled group activities at 8.30. So the drop-off times from before do apply. Make sure to bring a refillable water bottle for your camper or to include a refillable water bottle. Because we are outside so much and um, we won't always have access to the water fountains, that's a really good thing to include. So um, our drop off for the nature center will be here in the front of the building and surrounding areas, including our nature play skate, which we'll have a map of that at the bottom here. Um, however, on the first day of camp or the first session that or the first day of each session that your child is attending, um, we will need you to check in at the front desk. So Savannah mentioned earlier that uh, that first time you were bringing your child to camp, uh, there's maybe an alternate check-in location. So that's inside the building here at the Nature Center. So um, you'll see our main building in the parking lot and uh, the front desk is right through the front doors there. So uh, as far as what else campers should wear and bring besides a refillable water bottle that I mentioned, uh, we're spending a lot of time outdoors at this camp. So it's important that campers are dressed appropriately for the outdoors. Uh, we're going to be running and playing in those hot months. Uh, we wanna make sure that we're dressed appropriately for that, for days that it may be rainy weather or colder temperatures. Um, those are things to look out for before uh, sending your uh, child to camp for the day. So some of the essentials that every child will need includes a face mask, closed toed shoes for nature day camp, um, that comfortable clothing for the day and the weather of the day, uh, a lunch and a refillable water bottle. Those are the essentials. We also recommend that you send your camper with a backpack or a string bag. Um, long pants are really good to have because we do spend time in the woods and Crystal Lake Park. Uh, those long pants will help for, you know, plants that might be on the ground, thorny things that'll help give a little more protection. Uh, light colored clothing is great during those hot weeks. Um, just to reduce that sun heat, since we are outside a lot. Uh, a hat is also great. And then a rain jacket, obviously for rainy days. Um, another optional bit of uh, items that your camper may want to bring include sunscreen, insect repellent, maybe a light jacket that can be taken on and off uh, if it gets warmer or colder throughout the day, uh, and then maybe a pair of sunglasses. Uh, so as far as sunscreen and insect repellent go, we will discuss that here in just a moment as well. So label all your personal items with your camper's name, please. Um, we are moving around uh, all about through uh, Busey Woods, Crystal Lake Park, our playscape and the building. So it'll be really uh, helpful to have those names on there for lost items. Uh, so for Nature Day Camp, uh, for each of our two-week sessions, we will send a schedule out to adults and guardians um, on the first day of each camp session. So that way you can kind of look at that to be planning uh, for when is our water days, maybe when is a day where we might be in different locations uh, throughout our area. 
Um, that way you can have an idea of where your camper will be and when and what you would need to provide for those different days. Uh, we will try to reach out uh, for any changes in locations. We'll try to update adults on that. We try to stick very closely to that schedule, especially as far as where we will be. So if there's changes in those locations, we try to update that as much as possible. Um, for this year, we will not be doing field trips as we have sometimes done in the past. However, we may bring in guest speakers this year um, and possibly do movies as a backup option, but we are looking into bringing in some special guests uh, that will bring in a little bit of extra uh, liveliness to camp. So, um, Let's see, make sure to, to keep on uh, your camper's schedule for information regarding those things. And, and as discussed, those will go out at the beginning of each session. So we will be using EPACT as Savannah suggests, or as Savannah mentioned. Um, and again, as Savannah mentioned, on rainy days uh, that are not super severe, we have uh, indoor spaces that we are able to use and we're able to do that safely this year because of our lower capacities. So um, as mentioned before, unless the weather is just really dangerous, uh, we'll be able to continue running camp on rainy days. Uh, moving down a little bit lower here, uh, the map that I mentioned, um, as well as the address of the Anita Purvis Nature Center, which is at 1505 North Broadway Avenue in Urbana. Um, and then this map gives a little bit of an example of the spaces that we use. So we use the Friendship Grove Nature Playscape, Busey Woods, which is kind of over in that, yeah, that left area there. And then um, Crystal Lake Park as well, which is just south of our building um, and the Nature Center main spaces here. So um, we the, the farthest away that will generally be on kind of a normal day uh, would be Crystal Lake Park. And Correct me if I'm wrong, Savannah, but I don't think we'll be going farther than that for any of our days since we're not doing field trips this year. No, probably the lake house would be as far as we'd have campers track. I don't want them going across university walking if that's not necessary. Right. And that's the lake house at Crystal Lake Park there. Yeah. And um, let's see, I believe that is the bulk of the information that I have for Nature Day Camp, what I'm going to do is just put my email in the chat right now in case anyone would like to contact me with questions specifically about Nature Day Camp. Um, and you can also call the Anita Purvis Nature Center anytime between eight and four with those questions as well. Thanks, David. All right, Joe, would you talk us through sports camp? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so. This year, uh, we're going to be set up at Brooklyn's Gym, which is located on um, East Washington Street in Urbana. Um, we're going to try our best to split up the campers as much as possible based on the age ranges, the age ranges that we'll have. And um, we're going to have a variety of activities for them over the two over each two week period that they'll be going into. Um, for original plans, we have um, different activities that are going to be set up for each session so that way there's some variety between the sessions as well uh let's see what else uh we have it bolded there as well that campers are not going to meet on monday july 5th due to the um holiday weekend uh we want to give you all as much chances to be around the campers as we will have as well um, we touch on some of the goals for camp, um, developing and discovering physical skills, strengthening campers' relationships and understandings of teamwork, developing those social skills, um, making friends, especially in times where everything is really technological now, and also developing that self-confidence and belonging with not only sports camp, but with the park district itself. Um, we've touched on lunch, snacks, and water um, a lot throughout this uh, meeting, but we do want to, you know, emphasize the refillable water bottle portion, especially here for the Brookings Gym. We don't have a lot of big water sources, so as much as you can to have those refillable water bottles, that would be the best for the campers. We're also going to do our best to provide um, extra water in case um, water happens to run out or anyone happens to forget their bottles. Um, labeling all personal items is another big thing that was touched on. 
and specifically for sports camp, we'll have um, weekly camp schedules for those varieties of activities um, for each session. Let's see. In terms of communication, we're gonna try to send emails out no later than that Sunday before the start of the week. So that way by Monday morning, as you're bringing your camper, you can bring any questions that you have for myself as a supervisor or for um, any of our coordinators or staff members here at Brooklyn's Gym. Let's see, on rainy days, we will be um, going inside and using the facilities that we have um, in the gym. We have a very large open space and a divider, in which case we'll be able to um, physically distance our campus as much as possible. So those won't be any really big problems or issues that we face in terms of bringing our campus inside. Um, but for the most part, we're gonna try to keep them outside and active and moving around in the different sports that they're gonna be playing. Also included on this packet are the sports camp map um, where the Brookings gym is located. In addition to the entrance and the parking lot area for which you'll be dropping the campers off. Um, there are also fields that you can't really see too much on this map, but in a Google map, you'll be able to see all of the different um, sport fields that we have um, to utilize here at camp. So we're really looking forward to seeing your uh, campers this summer and we're looking forward to giving them the best experience possible. Great, Gabby. Thanks, yeah. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Thanks so much. Um, so yeah, if you have not been to the Brookins Gymnasium, it is in the Brookins County Administrative Building. Um, and you see there's a South Learman Ave here. Learman runs between Washington Street and East Main Street. So you can pick it up either way. Um, and then you go Learman to just this little jog on Art Bartell Road here to park in the back. And that's where uh, just this one pod is the Park District's part of the Brookins Center. All right, and last but absolutely not least, Arts Camp uh, with Matthew Lewis. Yeah, for sure. So uh, both Arts Camp and Pre-K pre Arts Camp are going to take place at the uh, Phillips Recreation Center. Uh, and then for each session that we have, we have kind of like different themes. So I can kind of run down the themes real quick for each session. It's going to be a 2D art. Uh, we have photography, film and media, music and performance art uh art meets science and then public art and kind of in that order um with uh for like uh arrival and like drop off it's going to be we're going to have it in three separate rooms so we have a blair room a little room a little room and a car room uh so they're going to be all separated out by wall dividers um and then for each room well our first two rooms are going to be just for arts camp and our last room is just going to be for pre-k camp uh, in each room, uh, there will be somebody there with an iPad that has e packed on it. So we have three, I three iPads, one for each room. Um, and then for each new session, we are going to ask that, you know, you check in with the, the front desk staff. So the front desk staff, you'll see them as you kind of walk inside the building. <clears throat> um, as Savannah mentioned earlier, uh, when it came with came to snacks and stuff like that, um, I mean, even during, you know, spring break day camp, a lot of campers really got, you know, hungry throughout the day. And sometimes, you know, it, it was more of like, uh, they weren't sent with enough snacks or they, you know, they didn't have, you know, enough in their lunch and they would either eat some part of their lunch for breakfast along with their morning snack, or they would finish their lunch really, really quickly. And then by late, you know, late afternoon, they, they're hungry again. And, you know, and stuff like that. So we, we do tend to take a lot of movement breaks in between working on our art projects and stuff like that. And usually after their movement breaks is kind of when they're, they're, they're hungriest because now they burned off all their energy and they need to get their energy back. Um, so, and also like uh, David and Joe said, we, we do encourage bringing like refillable water bottles, uh, especially because right now we, we can't use the, the water fountains. So um, we do encourage them to, to bring their own water. Um, we will uh, we will have water like one standby just in case you know a camper or, or you know some sometimes you know you forget um, but we we do encourage you to bring your own uh, water bottles um, for clothes we do encourage you to wear like messy well not messy clothes but 
dress for mess is basically what we say is because we since we're doing a whole lot of different art projects and stuff like that we will be working with paint and we'll be working with a lot of you know other different type of art uh pieces and everything and we you know I, I would hate for like the camper to come in with their nice new clothes or something they just got or, or something they, they they're waiting for the next school year and you know to wear and it kind of gets you know something you know some type of paint on it or some type of you know any any type of <laughs> anything could pretty much happen uh any type of uh, art uh, uh pieces or something like that that gets on it and then we also um since we aren't taking field trips this year. Um, we are planning for having water days. Um, so th those will be also sent out with the camp schedule and everything on, on days that we, we do plan to have like <clears throat> water activities and things like that. But, um, and we also kind of to make you provide some months. Yes, we, we do provide smocks for really messy projects. Um, it, it, I will say it's limited, so it's not, I don't know if we have enough for everyone. So I, I would suggest kind of, it, it's more for just backup. It's more for like, if you don't have anything, then we, we can provide it, but it's not enough for every camper to have. So we suggest or encourage the parents to kind of get their own. Um, but you you would kind of you you would know about that if we get into any art projects that's like you you would probably need that. Um, uh, but yeah, for for field trips, we are planning on walking to maybe like a couple local parks. Um, we're thinking about mostly Carl Park. Um, we went to Carl Park during our spring break day camp and it worked out great. We were there for a couple hours. And it was fun. The kids loved it, um, and the walk wasn't too bad. Um, I know in the past they've walked to Crystal Lake Park too. That's something that we might have to discuss more, but I think we're just more of just, just to get them outside more outside of just the Phillips Recreation Center area, just to go to Carl Park and just them having like a different place to go to. Um, for rainy days, um, since most of our projects and everything are gonna take place indoors, uh, we do have a dance and fitness room that we usually like to use for like activities and things like that just to kind of get them you know active a little bit uh, but we of course we're gonna be outside as much as possible um you know unless it's thundering lightning anything that's that's like detrimental to you know their health or anything that could really like harm them in any way um and so yeah and with and when it comes to epact uh you know we everything is pretty much updated or it gets updated overnight so uh we we will keep the ipads here at the phillips recreation center they're going to be connected to wi-fi so as you update like your active or your your online account for camp it'll get updated for the very next day so i know we talked about having like picture ids uh or photo ids whenever you whenever a, a parent picks up a picks up their child or their camper and we have like if there's if there isn't a picture that's uploaded then yeah we we encourage you to kind of have your id but if you do upload it that night then it will get updated the next day so that that's good um and then here's the map basically of the phillips rec center uh we have the parking lot uh that's right next to the to the to the building right next to the to the playground that will pro primarily been be spending a lot of out outdoor time in um and then the building entrance is like right around the park right around the front door there yeah um and then right once you walk in uh you'll see the front desk uh so for first day of each session we ask that you check in with the uh who's working at the front desk um and then yeah and then once you go around the front desk you'll see the three meeting rooms uh those will be the three camp rooms so like i said the first two rooms will be for arts camp um, and then the last room will be for pre-K uh, day camp, so. All right, thank you so much, Matthew. Um, it kind of looks like you can access the parking lot from Springfield uh, or Main Street. No, that's not the case. You have to access it from Stoughton Street. So you'll go either, you know, down McCullough or Kohler to Stoughton to be able to park in this lot. And there is some nice uh, like 15 minute loading zone here in the front of the building too. 
Does anybody have any other questions? You're welcome to unmute yourself and ask or type your question into the chat. If not, thank you so much for coming today. All right, well, we are really looking forward to having your campers here at our camps. Excellent, thanks again, everyone. We'll see you later. Oh, here we go. I did get a direct message. What do we do about potty accidents at pre-K camp? So I, because Matt is the only one with pre-K camp this year, I'll let him answer that. But, you know, typically we call the adults and um, let them know if they don't already have a change of clothes at camp, you know, we'll ask you to bring a change of clothes. Sometimes Matt might be able to provide some alternate clothes. If you're really worried about that, you could always send, you know, just keep in your camper's backpack um, some extra clothes every day. So yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Sorry, I should have I should have touched on that. Yeah. So we do encourage that for you know for pre-K camp that you you do bring the camper with an extra set of clothes. Um, if an incident does happen, we we you know let the parent know. Um, but we, we have a few spare clothes here just in case, you know, if, if a parent is like at work and they, they, they just can't leave or they, they're, they're not able to stop by real quick, then we do have, you know, a few spare clothes here, but um, we do encourage you to, to bring a camper with uh, extra clothes. All right, thank you. All right, and David, uh, drop that link to the summer camp handbook in the chat one more time and uh, hopefully we'll be just broadcasting that to everybody here shortly as well so um, mm -hmm. it's on the urbana park district website which is urbanaparks.org look for the summer camp page and you'll find the handbook there all right thanks again everyone